God damn it, an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars, advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. The middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. We slow the learning, in fact. For a while now, I've been furrowing my brow in looking for answers to the question as to why it seems to be the case, and all evidence points to this, that feminism, women in general, and the consequences of all of that, divorce court, uh, domestic abuse uh, allegations, so on and so forth, uh, seem to be far worse in the Anglosphere, uh, in Anglo-Saxon countries, than they do elsewhere, um, specifically than, say, in continental European countries, although that is changing. Um, in the United States, for example, uh, divorce court is far, far more draconian than it is in Germany or in the Netherlands. And just as an example, and the same is true of Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and Ireland. So uh, essentially all English-speaking countries, and uh, I've been asking myself this over and over and over again and have not really come up or had, had not found any convincing answers. Now, this video is going to be talking about a lot of things, but one of the things I'm going to talk about is my own thesis, my own theory as to why this might be. And I'm going to try to link uh, this kind of, uh, well, hyperbolic feminism or the, the kind of extremes we see in Ang English-speaking countries to uh, extreme forms of materialism uh, and consumerism. And as we all know, the origins of consumerism are to be found in the United States, specifically post-World War II. Uh, you, know, you had a huge economic boom, new products were being made. At the time, for, the, for a few decades after World War II, the United States was, in terms of production and manufacturing, uh, really the, the centerpiece of the world, uh, supplying the world, supplying the United States, and uh, just coming up with innovation after innovation. Now, that was the basis of a uh, more modern, or the, basically the modern form of the economy as we've come to know it in its current uh, shape and form. However, uh, there were consequences to that, and I'm going to be talking a lot about, about a lot of different things in this video and try to trying to link them. Uh, one consequence of that is uh, you have a society where consumption becomes, uh, the tendency to, for consumption becomes uh, difficult to balance uh, up against the tendency for production. So uh, that, that's always going to be sort of a swinging pendulum. And of course in today's uh, state of affairs, in today's day and age, we know that consumption far, far out, particularly in the United States, outweighs uh, production, whatever that production might be, but certainly in terms of manufacturing, it's very, very clear. At the same time, politicized feminism, politicized feminism uh, came onto the scene in the 1960s, and women were quote-unquote liberated, and they were pretty much liberated to do what they want. Now, one thing that women really like doing is spending money. Uh, to the doubters out there, and people don't believe me, uh, I have a bunch of links and just can have a, a, a look at some of them. Um, but really, in every study I've looked at in regards to this, even if it's slight, women spend more money, they have more debt than men. So, for example, uh, in one link here, you can look at it debt by gender and race, ages 18 to 64 in 2007. In all but one category, I can count, and that one category is. Uh, all non-white or or Hispanic, in which uh, 
men have uh, four percent more debt in the category of home debt than uh, than women do in every other category women exceed men in debt so for example white women and men uh, with any debt this is I'm going to pr pretty much talk about that uh, median debt to income ratio women 1.22 uh, men 0.68 home debt 1.92 to 1.56 and so on and so forth credit card debt same story 49% uh, women 41% men 0.6 to 0.7 um, in that case there's a, a slight discrepancy as well but the general overwhelming tendency say in the case of debt whatever the form of debt is that women have more debt they go into debt more readily than men um, buying power spending power well, uh, income and labor statistics show women are working and earning more. Blah, blah, blah. We've all heard that one. Uh, but that's not really the import for this from a, a uh, article, the, the Catalyst, Changing Workplaces, Changing Lives. And I've posted a link as well. Um, but uh, you'll see in the information there that uh, women make key purchasing decisions. 74.9% of women identify themselves as the primary shoppers for their households. So that's a lot, 74.9%, according to MRI survey of the American Consumer in fall 2011. According to a study from the Boston Consulting Group, women in the USA uh, report controlling, quote unquote, this in quotes, 72.8% of household spending, and women in Canada report controlling once again quotes 67.2 percent of household spending um, additionally women control 12 trillion of the overall 18.4 trillion in global consumer spending uh, uh, when probed further the survey the survey actually asked wh whether women controlled or influenced purchase which is a much broader distinction <sighs> and so on and so forth I mean the um, the list is kind of endless. So I'll cite one more um, source. This is uh, called, uh, I think it's called TechCrunch, Why Women Rule the Internet. And uh, this is basically an article, very pro-female pro at the very least, uh, talking about how women sort of dominate the, the internet. Um, according to Glit Group, women are 70% of, of the customer base and they drive 74% of revenue. Uh, and then she also cites this woman, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, women can oversee over 80% of consumer spending, or about $5 trillion annually. And later on, she goes on to talk about uh, how much better women are at networking, blah, 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 and that Facebook owes its success, not its inception, but its success to women's participation, um, because they participate at, uh, in Facebook at a far, far greater rate. Than, uh, than men do. Uh, and this seems to be backed up by statistical evidence. Women, uh, so, so for example, uh, Sheryl Sandberg, COO of Facebook, has talked about how women are not only the majority of its users, but drive 62% of activity in terms of messages, updates, comments, and 71% of daily fan activity. Women have 8% more Facebook friends on average than men and spend more time on the site. Well, I don't know if that's an accomplishment, but you see where I'm going where, uh, with all of this. The point is that women have more disposable income, they spend more, they have more debt than men. Uh, that shouldn't really surprise people, but you know we have a bit of uh, we have a bit of statistical information to back that up. The question, of course, uh, is sometimes where does all of this uh, come from? I mean, just because they have a lot of money to spend uh, doesn't answer the question as to how they got the money. And uh, as this woman in this article uh, touted, uh, people people like that, and they like when people spend money. Um, you know, people who like talking about the GDP like when people uh, spend uh, money. I mean, for example, a girl I what talked about the uh, the costs of divorce proceedings basically boosting the GDP in the United States, and that's true. I mean, uh, not just theoretically. When the government decides to spend money on, I don't know, helium balloons with neon lettering, that boosts the GDP, however slight. It doesn't mean it was a productive use of, uh, of money or spending money. It just means it boosts the GDP. So the GDP is pretty worthless in that regard, or valueless, rather. Um, but yeah, so women spend more money, they have more debt, and so on and so forth. You might be asking now yourself now, where are you all going with this? Uh, I mean, it's all not well and good, but what I'm, where I'm trying to connect the dots here is that 
consumerism in its sort of malignant form, whereby it's, it's almost obsessive and it's unhealthy and it's almost pathological, had its roots in the United States. Women, of course, spend more money, they go into debt more readily, and uh, they are much more fearless about how they spend money and what they spend money on. That is, women, uh, on, on the whole, spend uh, money on frivolous I items like clothing articles they don't really need, uh, makeup, uh, things that, that aren't really considered essential items, although maybe some women might consider them essential. So that means that the consumer-driven economy not just in the United States, but worldwide, is primarily driven by, by women. Um, we talked about the global, uh, the global state of affairs. I think it was the number is 12 trillion to 18 trillion total. Um, you, you, know, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to, to look at that and think, wow, that's just astronomical. <laughs> that means that consumerism, in large measure, in the largest measure, that is, is driven primarily by women's uh, desires and spending habits. And so you, there is a nefarious and uh, unholy alliance, if you will, between the consumerism that uh, took off as a result of increased productivity post-World War II and the inception or the introduction of politicized feminism, liberating women, and you end, you end up with women who, in the sphere, in the economic sphere, spend and money on whatever they want. Um, not only that, you have industries which aren't industries, technically speaking, but are pretty much, pretty much amount to them, such as the divorce court industry, um, domestic abuse industry, I think, and go on record, Aaron Pizzi even claimed that it was an industry of uh, several million pounds, actually, uh, in one interview. So these are all industries, and of course, since women spend a lot more money on a lot more junk, and there's a lot of junk being produced these days, all of these industries have a vested interest in keeping women pleased, or at least uh, marginally content, content enough that they continue spending. This is one of the reasons why, in my opinion, we we who might call ourselves MRAs or part of the MRM or who have any interest in all any of these issues and topics are really up against a brick wall. Because as the old saying goes, you have to follow the money. Where is the money? The money is flowing from women's purses. Now, however they might get the money, they might be getting the money through uh, wealth confiscation through divorce proceedings and so on and so forth, but it is flowing from the the money that they somehow have acquired into uh, various frivolous products. And I would argue that Facebook is a frivolous product, uh, although you don't pay for it technically, but advertising and what have you. Uh, and they are spending all of that money. And so anyone who is a manufacturer of these frivolous products Anyone who runs a company is going to keep uh, their eye open to that. Of course, a company is there to uh, make money, specifically to make uh, m money for its shareholders. And uh, companies, you know, I, I, you know, as much as I'm a capitalist, companies don't really have, they have as much moral compass as uh, an, an ethical approach as the people in charge and as they're willing to sort of, well, either... Uh, skeet around the law or, or not. That is to say, um, they don't really care about the consequences of what's going on. So in, in, the, sense, in the sense that consumerism, in this, in this sense, consumerism, of course, empowers, uh, empowers feminism and feminist-driven ideals in society. Um, women are the consummate consumers. Now, I'm going to make a leap here from that to something a little bit more complicated. So one of the negative aspects of uh, this kind of consumerism uh, is, is materialism. I mean, it's ki it kind of goes hand in hand. In a society, and it's not just women these days, it's more and more men, hence the in introduction. Um, but in a society where uh, consumerism is the rule of the game, where you, you're buying toaster ov ovens, so to speak, left and right, and you're also chucking them away left and right. Um, the mentality that's going to arise from that 
is is very much one of uh, of product useful products not useful um, and you don't keep around products that aren't useful anymore so amongst people specifically women uh, men were always held to be utilities we know men throughout history have just been giant well, complex toaster ovens in a society though where consumerism is the driving force um, that attitude to people in general but specifically of, of women towards men will uh, grow potentially exponentially because uh, everything is just you viewed on, a, on, a, on the basis of its utility to you it's just a product you buy it I mean this is this is another reason why interpersonal relationships between men and women are just a catastrophic mess I mean that, and that's euphemistically speaking I mean it's a lot worse than just a catastrophic mess um, I would argue in addition to the solipsism thesis that uh, well and partially because of that when when women view men uh, in this light I mean pure I mean with, with with completely stripped of whatever humanity he might have had in the past which wasn't much um, it, you are just a toaster oven as a man, and if this, this this explains a great deal. I would argue that the far, far, far more draconian state of affairs with regards to women in the Anglosphere as compared to other countries is in large measure uh, due to this. The more materialism, the more consumerism a country suffers from, the worse it becomes, uh, for men at least. Because women are going to spend more money, they're going to spend it more frivolous, frivolously, and of course there are other consequences which I'll get to in a second. Uh, and uh, men are going to be viewed uh, not only as the beasts of burden they've always been, but I mean the beasts of burden. Uh, you know, you know the the twenty four hour uh, razor kit. You know, you chuck it away when you're after after one shave. Pretty much the same thing uh, in a, in a society where. Everything is just a product, inclu inclu including human beings. Uh, whatever la the few, the last vestiges of humanity you might have had, they're they're just gone. And I would propose to you that uh, a lot of that does, in fact, have to do with with materialism and consumerism and the, the, the this, this this massive obsession with it that is primarily driven by women. Women love spending money. Uh, they don't really care how they get the money, although I I'm, I'm they, of course, prefer to spend other people's money, be it the money of ex-husbands, the money of husbands, uh, the money of taxpayers uh, indirectly, or directly, if you will, uh, acquired through government aid and assistance. They like spending money, and they like buying things. And all this social networking is some of the most frivolous uh, nonsense out there. I'm sure I participated to a certain extent, but you know, uh, certainly not the basis of lasting uh, bonds and friendships between people, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Although it can be, uh, I'm not going to say it's impossible. So, yes, we have this. We have massive consumerism emanating from the United States originally, and also the United States, probably the worst country in regards to all of this, with VAWA and rape shield laws. Uh, of course, the UK isn't too far behind. Maybe they're ahead of us in some uh, ahead of the United States in some respects. And uh, men have completely shed their humanity because in a con consumerist society uh, where you have the evolutionary history behind it where men were just beasts of burden utilities anyway, men have become the ultimate 24-hour uh, toaster oven. You just chuck it away when you're done with it, or him in this case. So uh, there's that. <coughs> of course, there are far greater consequences to all of that. Uh, it's not just uh, a... Uh, interpersonal thing, although of course interpersonally men and women are a cata catastrophe, I and mean, they've always been a catastrophe, but now they're, it's just beyond catastrophic proportions in large measure uh, due to this attitude towards people, which I see as a, a actually kind of an act of psych uh, psych psychological transference. Um, the attitude of, of, of your purchase, purchases and spending habits towards uh, from regarding products and then projected onto people. But Gerwitz Watt uh, talks very prescient, uh, presciently uh, about um, the coming fempocalypse, if you will, and there is a lot to be uh, to be said for it. She also cites the fact that um, the fempocalypse uh, doesn't need the active uh, 
participation of men going their own way or going on strike. It's going to happen one way or another. And all this spending that we see, all the government largesse, all of this stuff, has a lot to do with feminism, but also has a lot to do with women's demand for entitlements, their constant insatiable demand for more and more uh, entitlements. It's essentially w women acting out their hypergamy upon the government and the government caving in because men usually do cave in to female hypergamy. Um, and of course the government being made up mostly of men, that's what it's going to do. And of course people for years now have been talking about an economic collapse and eventually it will come. I mean the debt, the debt is uh, <laughs> we, we're, we've broken the record for, for a while now in, in the United States on, on the debt, the debt clock in New York. I remember walking by the debt clock uh, when after they had had, had, had had an extra digit historical moment. Um, but um, that that's what's happening. And so none of this is sustainable in the long run. The, the problem, but the problem here, of course, is that because uh, companies and businesses have a vested interest in keeping their revenue and their profits going, they will continue to uh, appease and appeal to women and their spending habits. They just keep, they keep on making more and more money. The problem is Girl Rights What Sites, of course, is a lack of productivity. Uh, men are, through identity loss and other factors, they, they just don't want to participate anymore. They don't want to slave away at 50, 60 hour a week jobs uh, f just for the sake of doing it. It's, it's pointless. It's one reason I'm not doing that. I, 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 and I find myself often uh, thinking about what I should do professionally in the long run just because that, that's not an end in itself and uh, it's certainly quite joyless. So men aren't willing to, to, to finance the system slowly but surely and the numbers are growing. You don't need to be a man going your own way. You don't need to go and strike. You don't need to do any of these things. Um, if you just sort of become aware of the raw deal, say, marriages and the raw deal that men at large in our society uh, receive, it's just not worth it anymore. So that fempocalypse, which coincides with an economic collapse, is, uh, I would argue, inevitable. It's just a question of when it's going to happen. And uh, once again, I would argue that the, the greater presence of feminism and female entitlement in the United States, the UK, in these Anglo-Saxon countries is due to the fact that these countries in large measure were, specifically the United States, um, the sources of modern consumerism in its current form. Um, and uh, one of the consequences of that is you begin viewing uh, people as products. Uh, you, you trade it in and out, the 24-hour razor. You just chuck it away when, when it's used. Um, and that has a, an, an element uh, of influence on people's mentality. And, you know, we always have the biological basis of everything, which is uh, the preceding element, as it were. It takes precedence. And then you slap on whatever cultural uh, admixture you might have to, onto that. And, uh, of course, um, in a society that is, well, strictly traditional, this is not me advocating traditionalism per se, um, where there are certain mores and uh, constraints, say, on female behavior, but on behavior at large, uh, a lot of these baser instincts, some of the poorer ones, the unpleasant ones, are going to be held in check, at least temporarily. In a society where the beast has been unleashed, i.e. female nature in the form of feminism, and women are allowed to do whatever they want and spend as much as they want, uh, the opposite's going to happen. So we not only have we uh, transformed uh, into a society uh, with with no constraints, the consumerism that has been ushered in in the past, I'd argue, five decades, and has uh, grows every day across the globe now, uh, is has transformed society into a world where people lose their individual value. Um, and I don't mean individual value in terms of their productivity, but the fact that they're human beings, that we can still attach some sort of intrinsic value to their being because they're human beings, and they're just products. They're the 24-hour razor, they're, they're the toaster oven, specifically men uh, that you chuck away. And finally, uh, with regards to this, is it any wonder that countries like China and India and South Korea 
and all these other countries are sort of transforming, uh, not slowly, but certainly surely, <coughs> into uh, a much more consumer society with divorce rates, divorce uh, initiated by women on the rise, uh, with uh, all the attendant consequences that we've come to know in the West, specifically in the Anglosphere. Is it any wonder that that's becoming worse and worse? It has become a pan-global phenomenon. There's no denying that. And I fear its origin did was uh, in the United States, and it, its origin w lay in uh, consumerism, or rather in the co-mingling, the nefarious co-mingling of uh, increased productivity, which unfortunately led to this consumerist mentality, along with the so-called liberalization of, uh, or Li sorry, liberating women from the, the bondage that they had suffered from. Uh, I mean, the most noxious, toxic mi mixture you could come up with. And you know, fast forward 50 years from uh, from back then. Well, we're kind of at where we're at right now. Um, but it's not just the United States; it's spreading everywhere. You know, I've received a lot of um, personal, uh, sorry, PM, yeah, private messages from some viewers, subscribers who are based in India and they tell me it is a nightmare situation and one day I might get to uh, doing some research and a video on the situation in India but uh, not only just with women only uh, car wagon uh, wagon booths and, and trains but uh, with divorce frivolous reasons for citing divorce we know it's on the rise in China um, I've been told I need to do more research. Uh, you know, Korea has been, South Korea has been transforming rapidly, not just economically, but a lot of the traditions are dying out there, and there's been a transformation. Transformation, the divorce rate there, last time I checked, is approaching 50%. With of course women uh, initiating uh, divorce much more often, and of course consumerism is rampant in Korea as well. Gadgets are uh, gadgets galore, fashion, all of these frivolous activities which uh, lead to an erosion of compassion and an understanding towards uh, of between people, specifically uh, towards men, and you just end up with, uh, with a giant mess. It's everywhere now. And unfortunately, for better or worse, I, I'm pretty convinced it had its origin in the United States um, that wi with, without, sorry, had its origin in the United States that without this consumerism that came to be as a result of increased productivity, and I don't know if that's inevitable, if consumerism always will be the result, I'll leave it uh, to uh, smarter people than I am to determine that, uh, that without that, I don't think it would have been as noxious and as nefarious as it's become. Because now there are re not just consequences on, on, a, on, a, on a microscopic or a mi rather microcosmic level for individual men. Uh, society itself is suffering because of all the spending uh, spending, 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 and uh, there's no restraint. Companies, to once again repeat myself, companies are not going to stop catering to women's needs, and this is why we're ultimately not just against an uphill battle, we're up against uh, a mountain far, far taller than Mount Everest in our efforts. Um, so we're run up against human nature, male and female nature, since both men and women favor women, we're up against uh, economic uh, advantages that companies see in having women spend more money. And uh, as Barbarossa has cited, uh, women are hypergamous. He said that uh, he said very eloquently that governments are a form of a husband, and they are, and uh, they uh, dole out favors, and women dole out the sex in the form of votes. So there's that as well. So. Now, when this, not if, but when this fempocalypse comes about, it is uh, not going to be pleasant, obviously. Uh, but there's, gonna, there's, a, there's something that people have forgotten about in all of this. The problem I see in the coming fempocalypse, whether we're alive to witness it or not, is that uh, <laughs> women notoriously being disinclined to take responsibility for anything they, they've done or might do are going to be pointing fingers. And you can bet your bottom dollar they're not going to be pointing fingers at themselves. They're going to be saying, well, it was the men's fault, right? 
And why are they going to be saying it? For the same reason they ask these, these stupid, uh, insipid questions such as, where have all the good men gone? Um, women, on a whole, seem to lack an ability to reflect and to turn inwardly to think about uh, their own actions and their own thoughts. It's just, it's all spontaneous. It's all based on the spur of the moment. It's all feeling. So, and the most important thing that, that women seem to lack in, as a, on, on, on the whole is this uh, ability to establish a relationship of cause and effect. So, yes, when the apocalypse comes, <laughs> it's not going to be pleasant because the women are going to be saying, you see, the reason this happened is because uh, all the men were shit and they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Women are not going to uh, look to themselves and assume responsibility. They will be pointing fingers at men, I'm pretty sure of this. Uh, and contrast to many, what may, many people think, I don't think traditionalism is going to arise from this. I don't know what's going to arise from all of it, but there'll be too much finger pointing for traditionalism to take a strong foothold in place of the, well, the blasted landscape that the Fempocalypse has brought about. Uh, what would, instead, I don't know, I can't, I can only conjecture and I don't even want to do that because I think w the, the landscape of the Fempocalypse is going to be something that most of us just can't even envision. I know I can't, I don't even know what that's going to look like, but the blame will be uh, laid at the feet of men. Of men. Um, remember, agency, hypo-agency, uh, that's the way it's going to go and that's the way the cookie is going to crumble. Um, and uh, it is a very sad state of affairs uh, to coexist with virtually, well, most of half the human race completely uh, non-cognizant non of, uh, of their own doings, of their own actions, of the consequences of those actions. And because they're not cognizant of these things, when it comes, when everything falls apart, they will blame men. And you do see this pattern recurrent. You see this pattern recurring constantly. Where have all the good men gone? Look at the London riots. Blamed on fatherlessness. Of course, fathers aren't allowed to be fathers in the cases where their children are stolen and taken away from them. So, if it, of course, fathers cannot participate, you see, but it's still the men's fault. It, it's impossible to, to use reason with people like this and because they don't see reason. Um, it's uh, unfortunate, but uh, we're, we are heading off a cliff. And I don't know what the wreckage is going to look like, but it's not going to be pretty. But I, I, one, can, one prediction I will make um, with 99% certainty is that women will not own up to the wrongs that they have committed and all their, their incessant need for entitlement their excessive consumerism, their spending, um, and the re their reduction of men from uh, vaguely human toaster ovens to 24-hour to razors where you, you just chuck away uh, after you're done with it. I mean, they will not uh, concede that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's not going to look pretty. What else can I say? Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope I were, was able to connect some of the dots there. Uh, a lot of this is sort of ongoing work in my head and the research I've been doing. Uh, so uh, hopefully it turned out okay. And uh, thanks for watching as always. Your viewership, support, comments are always appreciated. And uh, ultimately I, uh, I'd like to say one final thing before I end this video. A couple of days ago, uh, or maybe it was last week, I was in a conversation with a friend of mine I hadn't talked to in quite some time who I guess you could say just discovered all of this if you will uh, you know the whole the whole red pill world and to him of course it was revelatory it always is I always often call this the grand the grand hoodwinking I mean we've all been hoodwinked since since birth literally since you know we've been studied to show that boys cry more but women or girl babies are given more attention um, hoodwinked since birth into believing uh, what I consider the grandest, the greatest delusion of all time, namely that men are uh, oppressors, that we're extremely privileged, that we have an easy life, and that women are the opposite, are oppressed, suffering, um, and disadvantaged all the time. Well, I, I came in that conversation to realize why ultimately I do this. 
And it's only partly because I'm a bitter misogynist. <laughs> of course, that's one of the reasons. We all know we're all bitter misogynists. But um, I said that tongue-in-cheek in case you didn't get that. But that's just for the feminists who might uh, come in here and, and tell me. I was in a conversation recently with a feminist who, uh, a after a bunch of ad hominems and not ignoring the statistical data I offered her, said, oh, you're just a bitter misogynist. That's always how it ends. Why do I do this ultimately? Well, to me, uh, I, I try to be a rational person. And I think that my primary motivating factor, not just helping men, which is important to me, is, uh, well, I see this as the greatest collective delusion we've labor labored under, uh, well, since the inception of civilization. Uh, everyone, well, everyone and his mother is, is, is operating under this delusion, or 99 plus percent of humanity. We all buy into this notion that um, <laughs> men are privileged and women are oppressed and we all don't regard men as full human beings and women have more than humanity than men do so uh, the reason ultimately why i do this i've come to the conclusion for myself is i i i'm combating massive delusion and it might be no it's not might be it is the case that my work what i do here is going to affect almost no change whatsoever beyond in a few individual men and ultimately that's what I'm doing but uh, that's why it's important to me it, it, if humanity is ever to progress and I don't I'm not very hopeful of that we're going to need to move past the uh, the greatest del delusion ever sold to us and uh, it has so many different dimensions to it but it all comes back to the same thing uh, that women are suffering underprivileged and men are well the opposite privilege and having a uh, having a great time and uh, until until that changes uh, and it probably never will I guess I'll keep on doing this until I drop dead um, because I hate delusion and uh, since I view this as the greatest delusion we've suffered from in the course of human civilization I will do everything in my power to continue combating that delusion. Okay, that was a mouthful. Thanks for watching, and everyone take care.